So 2 for 2021, the Chad Townsend Show. Firstly, before we get into it, today's episode is brought to you by your newest local craft beer company, Cronulla Beer Co. Make sure you head to the website, www.cronullabeerco.com.au, where you can check out all the beer, all the merch, and everything about uh, our new XPA, the next level XBA, that gets me on to today's guest and teammate of mine, Blake Braley, welcome to the show, brother. Thanks for having me. Thanks for coming on, man. And uh, yeah, just quickly, like if you're watching this on YouTube right now, <laughs> look, in, look at the camera because like, I don't know if you can see it, but uh, I've chipped my bloody tooth. And yesterday in wrestle, we'll obviously do wrestling pre-season and it's quite full on and um, young Lukey Metcalf hit me with his head and knocked the back of my tooth and then now this morning, I'm ha- today I'm having lunch just before Blake gets here and I bite into a sandwich and I it knocks out my tooth and then Blake gets here 10 minutes later, knocks on the door he opens up and he's just staring straight at first, first thing I look at, the Barry <laughs> beef. And Half now, a tooth. Now I'm just sitting here all, all, the, all the time with just and Blake's just staring at me, <laughs> my front tooth. But don't worry, I've got an appointment this afternoon at 4.30 uh, to check it out. But it is our day off, and I do appreciate you coming on today, Blake. But um, how are you at the moment, Bruzzy, in the middle of pre-season? What's been happening? Yeah, middle of pre-season. Um, first week back with my, my ankle out of rehab. So, um, yeah, it's good to be back with the team, back with the gang, and doing a bit of contact. It's been good. Yeah, so talk to me about the ankle. Obviously, um, you know, did it in the very last game of the year against uh, the Raiders down in Canberra, didn't score in a try. Tell me, you know, what happened in the lead up to the injury, and then, you know, like I said, you did it score in a try. It's pretty incredible. Yeah, I'll, I'll give you a wrap. You did a you did a good, good kick down the corner, and uh, we all we all sort of squeezed up in defence. And remember, Elliot Whitehead dropped the ball, and I sort of picked it up mm. through a dummy, and I uh, sort of went through, and big Josh Papali sort of landed on my ankle. Yeah, geez, the big big papa. That's, yeah, that's, but, uh, not a, that's not a light body. No, nah, I didn't feel good. <laughs> I sort of relate it to like snapping a wheat bix. That's what oh. it sort of felt like and sort of So you, f- like. you heard a snap? Yeah, I knew straight away. It was, yeah. I was in some drama. Because you didn't go off straight away. Like you tried to play on and uh, you, you, they strapped it over the boot. And I remember like I seen you like limping around. I was like, man, he's no good. But you were on for maybe a good five minutes after you did it? Yeah, I was I was plodding along. Um, I remember I was running back into our... Um, Back into our defence line, and all the team was saying it was get it, Brayley, get it, Brayley. <laughs> and I knew I was in some drama there. And then um, when I got back in the sheds, as they do, they did a bit of testing on the ankle, see how see how strong it is. And yep. I just remember them twisting it. And normally, when they twist it, there's a bit of resistance. But mine was just at a ninety degree angle; it was just it was gone. I couldn't even take my boot off; it was just that swollen. Yeah, already. right. And then, um, you know, I remember, I distinctively remember, and before we came on air today, I remember the conversation you and I had straight after the game because obviously in 2020 we were inside the NRL bubble all year. We couldn't, guys, we couldn't even go to the beach and go for a surf. And that was how hard, we couldn't play golf. We couldn't do any leisure activities, things that we like to do away from football. And the first thing Blake says to me is, I can't go for a surf. <laughs> <laughs> because I've just broken my ankle, I've got six weeks in a boot or whatever. I need surgery. Like I've just, I'm out of the bubble now. Like you were, you were a bit down, were you? Yeah, inside that bubble, the first thing I wanted to do was just go for a surf, go to the beach, and as soon as I did, I just knew that those plans had to change. Uh, it was just a bit of a punish, but it's probably the best situation to do. I didn't miss any games, so yeah, yeah, it's pretty definitely. lucky in that sense. So, and this was your first major injury or first major surgery? Yeah, first major surgery, so it was a bit nerve-wracking going into the, the hospital bed and yeah. waking up and my ankles all yeah. fixed. Yeah, so um, considering that you did have off-season surgery, uh, syndesmosis was the diagnosis, yeah? Yeah. So, I mean, you know, spent pretty much my whole off-season in a boot. What... 
like what did you do in the off season? Um, so before I did Manco, we already had a, a Byron trip sort of planned, uh, me and a few mates. Um, so we went camping, did a bit of a road trip. We drove up to Yamba, Coffs Harbour, stopped off at Byron, and um, I still sort of did that. I, when all my mates were out surfing, I just sat on the beach and just sort of smiled and had a bit of fun there. But um, that's it. Yeah, still, um, still went away, still, uh, you know, got to get away from the Cronulla outside the bubble. So that was, um, took up a big p- chunk of our holiday. And then when yeah. I got back, I was back into training. Yeah, no rest, straight back into it, eh? Um, all right, let's move on to a bit of uh, Blake Braley as a young fella growing up. Obviously, you come from a pretty heavy, heavily weighted footy family. You've got your older brother, Jaden, younger brother, Taj. And then your folks uh, as well, who have been very, very supportive of all your boys' careers. But um, growing up in you know Menai, Barden Ridge, playing for yep. the Aquinas Colts. Yep, Colts were uh, a bit of a fierce enemy back in my day when I was a young fella. <sighs> Mate, yep. They carved you up. <laughs> um, but yeah, how was it growing up and your you know your, your junior footy? Uh, like I said, at the Colts, you obviously you know made some good friends there. Yeah, we had a, a great side there at Colts. Um, you know, a lot of players are still pushed through the NRL system now. Um, growing up, you know, I was just like every other young kid playing footy with my brothers. Um, whatever they did, I, I wanted to do. And, um, yeah, we, we came from a footy family, so every chance we got to train or, you know, play in the backyard, we would always take the opportunity and play. And would you say your dad, Glenn, who actually does a bit of stuff with us now in recruitment at, at the Cronulla Sharks, would you say he was a massive influence in your career? Yeah, for sure. Um, he, he loves the game as well. He's uh, coaching at Cronulla at the moment. And, yeah, I just remember every chance we got, he would he'd be out there playing with us. He'd be training us every opportunity we had. Um, you know, i got vivid memories of being in Barnum Ridge and we had this big uh, boxing bag and he used to run sideways and we had to run and tackle it yeah just different drills like as as a young kid where i, I sort of look back now and happy he did those sort of things but um yeah he's definitely passionate about the game and it's definitely passed on to us and what was your brother like Jaden, in the backyard Do you, i know you're going to say you were better than him in the backyard <laughs> but were you actually um, or was he better like you nah, can be truthful uh, here no, nah, probably he was probably better. You know, he was because he he's bigger. Yeah, he was always a bit stockier, a bit bigger. He's two years um, older than you as well. Yeah, two years older than me. But um, yeah, I remember we uh, every Origin game would pick a team, and uh, I'd choose Queensland. He would choose New South Wales, and would vice versa every game. And every team, every t- every time the opposition team scored. We had to run directly at each other and just tackle each other onto the lounge. <laughs> so our nights were just one-on-one tackling onto the lounge, spear tackles, everything. It was just, it was a bit of mayhem. We um we got a trampoline and that was that was footy on there. It was um yeah every chance we got to get we had we um had a bit of com- competition against each other. So how was your mum in the house? Obviously, you know the only female like a kid, mm-hmm. a f- house full of boys. I can imagine how crazy it would be. Footy, footy, footy. Was she? Now, was she all right or was she, you know, in terms of like, no balls in the house and whatever? <laughs> I just remember hearing my mum saying, no balls in the house when yeah. I was younger. Yeah, definitely no balls in the house, yeah. footy boots outside. Um, yeah, she's she's great. She's very supportive of all of us. Um, you know, she, she does everything possible for us to be where we are today. And yeah, um, yeah growing up with three boys, sorry, four boys is pretty tough. So I think she um, got a bit over it a few years ago. She got a dog and... It had to be a girl dog, so that's her <laughs> contribution to the family. So um, she's happy there, but yeah, she's definitely done so much more, so much for us. Talk me through your junior days at the Aquinas Colts and some of the best memories you you had at that junior club. Because when I look back at you know my time in my junior club, like I always say that I'm very lucky that the guys I started playing footy with when I was five years old are still my best mates today, and. You know, it's for there, the Colts, the club, to give you that opportunity to fall in love with the game. You know, what are some of the fondest memories you have of a kid, like, you know, playing footy, like going to the, you know, things like going to the canteen and whatnot, yeah. like, you know, creating friends. Like, tell me a bit about that. Yeah, um, you know, most of my friends now to this day are still from that team. Um, yeah, I think probably the best thing was just turn up at training and, you know, you got your 13 best mates there training every day. Um, you know, I'd be playing in the afternoons and then, 
getting a meat pie and watching the A grade on the hill. Um, yep. <laughs> but um, yeah, definitely those those things I look back on and I really cherish forever. You know, those my friends are my closest mates at the moment, and even those uh, those camp trips we had to Canberra playing footy over there, just those sort of small things that you always look back on. And you mentioned that you're the team you had coming through. You guys had a lot of success. How many competitions did, did you win? Yeah, we won 10 in a row. 10 in a row, one, man. Yeah. See, <coughs> I thought we were good. We won seven. <laughs> but, uh, man, that's impressive. And, uh, you know, who are some of the guys you play with in your team growing up that are still playing today or playing in the NRL or, or still, you know, going grinding at it away? Yeah, so I'd probably say we had a pretty stacked side, I think. You can probably tell that as well. Um, you know, we had myself, Kyle Flanagan was in there. Bronson Cherry was playing. Um, his brother Dylan was there. Um, you know, we had Amu Lua Lua who played through under 20s and his brother's in the NRL system now. Janai was in our team. We had Finne Kula. Um, wow. Yeah, I think looking back on it now, 1 to 17 was most likely our under 20 side. So Jeez. we had a really strong side there. And um, yeah, it was. We're probably above most other teams at that age. Um, I remember under thirteens, we were, we were doing block plays, we were training four days a week. You know, we had my dad there. We had Shane Flanagan. Yeah, I was going to say we, it would it'd be probably pretty common to see Sharks head coach Shane Flanagan down yeah, there. Yeah, he was he was down there very often. So um, we always had uh, you know a great great training system and always had a good work ethic. So yeah, we had a we had a pretty good side. I'd say that's pretty sick and then uh you know obviously that sort of your your platform for your footy and then you come into you know like junior reps um maddie's cup making you know did you make junior reps and did you make those sort of development teams uh and then how was that experience i guess coming into an age group where you know footy starts to get i guess a little bit more serious than just playing for your club team yeah i made um harry matthews was probably my first um, real serious junior rep team I made. Um, made that a year young, and that was probably the first time I transitioned into hooker. Um, I made it as a halfback, and then one of our hookers left, and you know they said, you know, chuck you in there, have a go, and that's where I've been ever since. But um, yeah, the transition was great. Um, you know, still the same players were there from my junior club, and um, you know the nerves were a lot more intense. The games were yep. a lot more intense. You know, coming up against Penrith and Parramatta, those bigger sides. Um, I was always a bit nervous to play those games. But, um, yeah, definitely those games were, were great, intense, um, high level then. And, yeah, as I moved through the grades, it just got better and I became stronger and more in love with the game. So you just mentioned that you moved into hooker. How, what position did you play when you were, when you were younger? Um, I was a 5'8". Five 5'8". Eight. Five eight. Kyle was a halfback. I was a 5'8". You were in front of a half of 5'8". Yeah, the skinny number six I was. <laughs> But, um, yeah, he, he just controlled the game. I would just step in there wherever I could and yeah. fish the ball off pretty much. Yeah, nice. So talk me through the uh, the junior – is it called the junior championships or when – was it SG Ball or Matthews Cup when he's won the whole thing? SG Ball. SG Ball. Yeah. So the same year, what year was it, 2015? Yeah, 2015. So 2015, right, uh, I'm pretty sure – I'm not sure when they brought it in – but the winner of the Harold Matthews and the winner of the SG Ball in New South Wales plays the winner of the, I guess, the Queensland yep. um, counterpart competition for 16s and 18s, right? And the Sharks this year won, they won Harold Matthews and they won SG Ball. And Blake was in, like you just said, the SG Ball team. They had a stacked team. And so you guys won the premiership in New South Wales Cup. Then you played the Queensland team. Who did you play? How was that experience? And then when you won, you know, what was it like? Yeah, that was great. Um, winning the SG Ball competition um, just for the New South Wales was great. We versed South there, and that was against Sifatalikai. Oh, really? Where he was still the same size, <laughs> still <laughs> running same. over people. Same size. Yeah, we always bring it up here through every training same session. Same height, yeah. 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 <laughs> same height, same size. Um, yeah, then the next week we moved on to versing the Townsville Stingers at Belmore Oval. Um, that, was, that was intense. Probably a game we... No, probably shouldn't have won. We um, won with about 10 seconds to go. Really? Yeah, we had Curtis Scott in the centre. We just flicked past it, flicked past our winger and scored in the corner. But, um, yeah, we had a stack side there as well. We Jeez, had there's another name, yeah. Curtis Scott, Billy Magulius. We had yep. Jack Williams. Um, we had Daniel Vasquez, Will Kennedy. The list goes on. But, um, 
yeah, that was an intense game. That was a another great memory. You know, I still got those medals sitting in uh, in my room. But yeah, that was a game that was very intense and came down to pretty much the last play of the game. Jeez, that's really that's crazy. Um, so after I guess your progression through the junior reps, making Harold Matthews SC ball, you come into tw- your twenties team, yep. and uh, I remember in 2016 when we had we, we were having such a good year and I remember uh, you guys in the 20s were pretty much you know having just as an equally good year winning a lot of games yep. and then I'm pretty sure did you finish minor premiers yeah I finished minor premiers that year so you finished minor premiers but then you guys lost and lost in straight sets didn't you got yeah, knocked out I don't I don't like talking about this year we <laughs> we won something ridiculous like 17 games straight or yeah. I don't know what it was and yeah we thought we we fi- we finished minor primaries, thought we were going great, and mm. then out out both in first semi finals, and that was our year done. And Bomber was coaching then too, yeah, correct Bomber, 20s, wasn't he? Bomber was in there, DJ was running the water, yeah. so yeah, that was uh, that was a tough tough year to finish yeah. that way. But yeah, pro- that that stuff probably hurts the most because, like, you personally put you think that you didn't achieve what you wanted to... Like, you would have thought, the way the season you would have had, that if we didn't win the comp, it was a waste of year. Yeah, for sure. It was, it was a real deflating feeling. We yeah, yeah. went through the year pretty much beating teams 30-0 every mm. week. We, yeah. <coughs> we were yeah, we were red hot the whole year. And then those two games where the pressure was really on and we, had, we really had to win, we just fell short. So it was a bit of a deflating feeling. Yeah, I remember... Actually, because I remember this because I think you were playing. Were you playing? Did you get knocked out by Manly? Yeah. See, yeah. I remember this. We were on the bus, right? 2016. We were driving to a semi final game and we stopped. We were on the way into. Might have even been. Oh, I can't remember who we played, bro. But we put, we stopped and we stopped at these traffic lights and the pub. There was this pub and they had the, the game on the big screen. And we, we I looked over on the big screen and you guys at, you could see and you were behind by a fair bit. And I was yep. like. Man, they're gonna lose. Yeah, I know. Yeah, that was <laughs> that was a, the last twenties game that was against Manly, and they obviously went on to win yep. the premiership. But yeah, the, that game was tough. We it was a hot day at ANZ, and I just remember the whole time we just felt like we were always on the back foot, and then they um, they put a few points on us, and then it was year over for us. So that was your second last year of 20s, uh, th- that season when you were 19. Now, your last year of 20s, you didn't even play a game of 20s because yep. the NRL staff wanted you to, I guess, get ready to play NRL, play against men. So you played New South Wales Cup the whole year. How was the step up from 20s where you're playing usually against boys? Well, you still are a boy. <laughs> <laughs> so, But, you know, you go into the New South Wales Cup uh, team and you know you still felt comfortable, still felt you know still feel like, felt really good. Or at the start of the season, were you a little bit nervous about making the step to the next next level? Um, no, I was still really comfortable in that in that New South Wales Cup system. Um, definitely felt the impact in the first game. You know, a lot bit of bigger bodies there. You know, versus men. Um, you know, versus some big names. You know, Tim Manor was in there. There was Aluni Vinikathe. I remember him running at me the first game yeah. and. Yeah. Oh yeah, this is this is tough, but um, yeah, definitely never just the step up, but I I quite enjoyed it. Um, you know, like the faster game, um, you know, a bit more intense. So it was good to have that year. Then we we should have won the premiership yeah. there as well, <laughs> but <laughs> yeah, that's something. So it's fair to say you've been in and around a few premierships in your career so far. Yeah, I've thought about <laughs> it every year, and I should not have lost every year. Twenty should have won. New South Wales Cup, the year after New South Wales Cup, we won again. Yep. But it's funny, I always talk about this at home, and Jaden, he's, sorry, but he's never won a premiership. <laughs> oh. He lost, he even lost under, <laughs> what was it? the wounds. Under 16 Bs. Oh. Bs, not Bs. even the A's, he's still lost, <laughs> but I still give him that to yeah. this day. Yeah. But yeah, I've still, I've been in a few premiership, a few um, grand finals and fallen short, won yeah. too many times and I've hoped. So that was the that was 2018 where you played that full season of reserve grade, yep. get yourself ready, which was your last year of 20s. Uh, 2019 uh, comes around. You've had a, a really good preseason. Uh, your brother's still at the club, and you debut round one, which is pretty special. Come off the bench. Tell me the story about you know when you found out you're you're debuting. 
what it was like. Um, who do we even play? Uh, Newcastle. Newcastle. Yeah. Oh, f- I remember In that. Newcastle. Game. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh. So tell me, tell me the story about you know how you found out, who told you, and then what you did with that news straight away. Yeah, so I found out on the Monday before we played on the Saturday. Um, Bomber brought him into brought me into his office and sat me down and closed my door and just said, "Oh, hey, feel it, mate. You know how how's the body? I broke my finger at the the week before, so I was just coming back from that, and I um, yeah, he just sort of sat me down and said, "Oh, how you feeling? Um, are you ready to play Newtown this week?" <laughs> I said, said "Oh, that. yeah, yeah, I'm ready to go. I'll I'll be fine." I'll, he goes, "Yeah, mate, they're playing at." to Noble at three o'clock. I said, "Yeah, yeah, don't worry." So he goes, "Oh, actually, you know what? Don't don't worry about that. You're gonna make your debut this week." So I thought, like a cold shiver just went through my body. I remember getting goosebumps. It was yeah, a moment I won't forget. I remember just sitting there sweating already. Yeah. And um, yeah, I just remember walking out of there and got on the phone straight away to my parents. Um, told them the, told them the news and they shed a, a few tears and then went over to my brother before we had the video. And um, just sort of told him. I didn't really want to tell everyone else. Just sort of kept it a bit quiet. Yep. And, um, yeah, then Bomber announced in front of the team. And he yeah, has an unreal feeling. Something I can't really put into words. Yeah, that's pretty special, man. Especially, like, uh, playing with your brother in your NRL debut. Um, yeah, I mean, what was it like when... I mean, I was even there. <laughs> <What> was <it? laughs> I'm asking you the question. But, you know, tell me, like, about... You know, uh, the moment before we ran on the field. Like, can you remember, did you have it? Did you embrace with your brother in yep. the sheds? Like, did you say anything to each other? Or was it like more like, you know, just. <laughs> yeah, it was. <laughs> a bit of a cuddle. Yeah, it was, it was a bit weird. I wasn't too nervous for the game. Um, I was pretty relaxed. Um, you know, before every game, we sort of go around. When, I, when aren't you relaxed, what? <laughs> yeah, that's true. That's, that's my whole life, just being casual. <laughs> but um, yeah, we, we sort of went around, shook, shook everyone's hands, you know, as we do before we run out. And. Remember, I just left Jaden to to the end, and we sort of had a hug together, embraced, and yep. um, yeah, he had a had a few words for me just to enjoy the moment, and yeah, I went on the second half. Um, when we're getting the the score sheet, and he ran over, gave me a hug before I ran over as well, and uh, yeah, we we came on and defended straight away, and Jesse Ramian <laughs> ran yeah. straight at me and. Knocked my mouth guard out, so that was fun. <laughs> <laughs> Thought I broke my nose first tackle. Oh, jeez. That was a good welcome to first grade, that was. Yeah, no, beauty. And then, so your 2019 season, you play, how many games did you play in 2019? Your debut um, year? Played 12. A, a lot, like a yeah. quite, that's a lot for your yeah. first year. Yep. So you played 12 games in your first year, yeah. um, played a handful of games for Newtown that year, yep. and then at the back end of the year, you went back and, and played the finals for Newtown as well. Yep. And you guys again, like, were in and amongst another premiership, yep. uh, winning the New South Wales Cup from eighth position, I might add, these the boys, uh, and yeah, you know, I'll get Blake to go through this team, but the team was absolutely stacked with guys who were playing NRL now. So you guys won the New South Wales Cup, then won the state championship. I was at both games. Yep. Great games. Uh, but tell me a bit about that experience and that finals with that team. Um, yeah, that year was great. Um, going back to Newtown, um, they really embraced me. It was a great time there. You know, I remember on Thursdays we'd train and have um, a pizza on the field. So <laughs> that was always fun. <laughs> I enjoyed that. Um, but yeah, those games were all were all nail biters. Um, you know, our team, like you said, we had Will Candy at the back, Siona Catala and Ronaldo on the wings, Jackson Ferris in the centres. We had Jack Williams in the halves. We had um, Arva C Manafani in the middle with Vasquez, Toby Rudolph, Teague Wilton was in there. Britain played a few games. It was yeah, it was a pretty red hot team and. Um, yeah, I remember that Leichhardt game. We were, were all on the hill, yeah. uh, giving it to us. So uh, that was great. That was a good game there. That was our first semi there, and uh, we beat the Bears there. I think it was. And yeah, then, that was the game. We we played Manly in uh, week one of the finals, twenty nineteen, and we lost. Yeah. And the next day, we you guys were playing, and we were like, we need to go and yeah. see on the boys. <laughs> yeah. And it was kind of like I'm pretty sure. But I felt, and you tell me if I'm wrong, but I felt like we lifted you boys that day by, like, you know, having the whole first grade team there. And we were getting into the game, like, cheering. Yeah. Um, and then when some one of the boys would do something good, like, we were like, yeah. Yeah, for sure. Like, it lifted the energy, would you say? Yeah, for sure. When yeah. you're hearing, you know, your excitement, then the noise coming from that corner that user in, it really brought us all together, really lifted us up and 
Yeah, I knew we were in for a good game when the whole team was there for sure. So, like I said, the boys finished from eighth. They came through. They f- they won the New South Wales Cup uh, competition, then played the State Cup competition, and the ends of those two games were just yeah. phenomenal. Billy, <laughs> Billy, Billy's, <laughs> Billy's boot, <laughs> Billy's boot, the uh, golden boot. Uh, talk me a, a bit about those two, uh, those two instances throughout those two games. Yeah, so the the New South Wales Grand Finals against Wentworthville, and they were. They were pretty stacked as well. They had, um, you know, Tim Mann, like I said. They had um, the Jennings brothers in the centres. They had a lot of players in there um, who played a lot of NRL experience. Um, yeah, it was a pretty back and forth game. That was at Bank West, so yep. that was probably the first time I played there, which was which was a good experience. It's a great day that day. Actually. Yeah, it was. Um, so yeah, there was a great crowd there. Um, you know, it was a nail biter the whole game, back and forth, team scoring. You know, they would score, we would score, and then. Um, yeah, it went to extra time. Uh, we're having a draw. And then I think it was the second five minute. Um, it was about a minute to go. And Billy puts in a kick for our winger, gets the perfect bounce, pass inside to Will Kennedy and yeah. try another post. And then yeah, it was. we thought that was something special that finished the game. And then next week we versed the Queensland Queensland winners, Burley Bears. and You thought, guys looked flat yeah. that game. I remember watching it. We and felt flat as yeah, well. Yeah, and I was like, what's going on here? Like, yeah. the boys are off today. Something's going on. But you hung in there, hung in there, yep. gave yourself a chance to, to do something at the end. Yeah. Um, I remember one key moment that really lifted the team was they made a break down the sideline and Will Kennedy just sprinted after him and pulled him up about, you know, centimetres short of the try line. And I just remember that being a turning point where we really turned it on there and Sione Katoa scored a few magic tries in the wings like he does. And yeah. Yeah, that that last two seconds, I think it was, just giving the Billy Billy the ball and seeing what he could do when he produced it. Jacko a, catches it. Yeah, a great kick and oh, under the try it was. I didn't think anyone saw it coming. It was the yeah, perfect no. bounce. If you if you did it now, he would not be able to recreate it. No, not that bounce. It was no. kind of like yeah, you, you you the generic kick, but it bounced to like a right Sideways, angle. Yeah, and just Jackson Ferris was there, right place, right time, goes through and scores. Mate, it was um, absolutely phenomenal. Do you think that having played all this, uh, sorry, do you you know when when you're at, in games now or at training now, and you look around and you're on the field and in games and you see all these boys that you've played so much footy with growing up, like the Will Kennedys and the Teagues and the Billies, and, and I could the list could go on. And now you guys are all playing first grade together. Do you feel like you know you guys are, are like really close mates and? have a great bond that you guys have experienced all that now, you know, and well equipped to handle everything that that first grade throws at you? Yeah, for sure. Um, You know, looking around at training, there's, you know, most of our 20 side is still there. That cup side's still there. Yeah, Um, yeah, it's pretty pretty funny at training. We sort of know what each other's strengths are and what we're going to do. So um, a bit hard at training when Billy knows when (laughs) I'm going to run a nine tiger and he (laughs) jumps on me straight away. It always happens. Everyone knows... Like when we're running tra- plays at trainer, the, the, the other team knows our yeah. play call. So we just want to like call it on the hush. I know, but they still hear it. They still <laughs> yeah. still shut it down. But um, yeah, for sure, it's great seeing you know, all those players I grew up with come through. Um, like I said, we sort of know what we, we each sort of bring and sort of do on the field. So um, yeah, sometimes it's not even a call. It's just a look and we know what each other's going to do. Yeah, that's sick. Um, and that, that only happens from playing years and years yeah. of, of footy together. So uh, all right. Uh, Brazzy, you want to go on to uh, the next part of today's uh, chat and it's about your brother and probably uh, one of the hardest or the biggest adversities that he's had to pay, face Sorry, uh, so far through his short career and yourself, uh, even though it kind of wasn't directly with you, was uh, Jade, yourself and Jaden, like I said, you play, you made your debut in 2019, yep. uh, um, sorry, 20. Yeah, 19. 19, yep. 19, my bad. <laughs> but then, obviously, you know, you, you, both of you guys play the same position, both hooker. And, you know, there was a decision there where the Sharks, the club, made a decision that uh, and told Jaden that he was free to find another home should he be able to find another club. And I remember talking to Jaden at the time and, you know, he was pretty rattled. He was like, you know, uh, going through a lot of emotions. Uh, obviously, you know, not feeling wanted, not sure where he would end up, would he have to move, all these sorts of things. How were you when he found out the news? Did he tell you, did he tell your dad? When was the first you heard of it? 
Um, it was actually kind of a long process. We we didn't want to rush into things. Um, it was a pretty emotional, pretty tough time to because you were off contract too, weren't you? Yeah, I was yeah. Off, we were both at the same time. Yeah. So yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, it was a pretty tough situation to go through. I um, remember playing in 2019, thinking, "Oh, this is it's going about this for for ages." You know, yeah. we're gonna play 50 games together, but yep. it eventually came to a, a crossroads and mm. sort of had to make a decision. Um, yeah, we we sat down at the table many times. Um, we were, it was a real open and honest conversation. Uh, my dad just sort of sat us down, both explained the situation, what mm. was going on, and um, yeah, we had many, many chats about what we were going to do, where will we sign, um, you know, just all sort of different things because we we didn't want to ruin each other's um, careers. You know, we both want to excel at a, gr- a club. We both want to win a comp. We, were, we both want to be a starting nine. So, um, yeah, it's a real, real tough situation to go through. I, I didn't really... Um, to anyone when I signed the contract, I just wanted yep. to sort of keep it private. Um, yeah, I didn't want to post anything on social media. I felt, I felt I was ha- sort of happy for myself, but also felt bad for him because I knew yep. how much he loved Cronulla, how much he just wanted to be at the Sharks. But you know, he he, he moved on for me. So um, yeah, that was a pretty tough situation. But yeah, I, I I remember it vividly actually because I remember yourself and I, I remember when you signed the contract and how yeah. you were kind of like didn't want to tell anyone and yeah. you didn't you didn't want to to be out there because you felt bad for your brother that he had to move on and it just sucks that you guys you know both play the same position and I remember talking to Jaden and he was like he was pretty pretty rattled yeah we had a lot of conversations where it was so pretty ha- tough yeah how was the conversation like was was it your dad that I guess took the driver's seat and really brought you guys together at home and was like boys we'll be sweet, like, we'll just talk it through. What yeah. do you guys want to do? Who wants to do what? Like, let's talk it out. Was he the instigator with all that stuff? Yeah, for sure. Him and both our managers, we got different managers really oh, that's good. took control of that. Um, yep. We just had many um, talks at the, the dinner table, just open, honest conversations. He he didn't hide anything from us. He just told us straight how it was. And, um, yeah, from there we just spoke about it. It was probably better went through that way. Um, yeah. You know, we didn't want to cause any drama between the family or any friction between me and my brother so um we had yeah i remember you know it was probably uh, three months we really sat down and um worked out the whole process um yeah we just didn't want to rush into things and eventually one of us you know gets a decision that we we do, don't really want so. yeah yeah that, man the, the three yeah. months and you, you don't like you said you don't want to rush those decisions but yeah. um having those tough conversations man i applaud you guys because it's obviously it's all worked out for the better with with both you fellas you know going on to bigger and better things and Jaden who's signed a three-year contract with the Knights and and into his second season now with the Knights uh, absolutely loving it up there the young fella isn't he's man I miss him I I miss you I I miss his head I miss his jokes I miss his clumliness around here yeah he's Um, he's clumsy (laughs) he's got two left feet everything just looks awkward but somehow he just Always seems to make everyone laugh every day. So Mate, have um, you seen how big he's not his big toe with the toe? Oh, have you seen how long it is? Don't they're, they're <laughs> as long as my fingers. Honestly, they're ridiculous. I don't, I don't know how he doesn't trip over his own feet. It's, oh, it's it can't be normal. So Jaden goes up to Newcastle and signs with the Knights for three years. Yep. Um, did you see? Did you see Jaden's first game? Have you watched him play for the Knights? Um, and you know, what's your conversations like now that he's he's up there? Um, yeah, I remember we as soon as he signed, um, I think Newcastle, when Jane was still at Cronulla, was still, uh, we played the next day in Newcastle. I remember watching them on TV and I think they got beat by a fairly big score and I thought, oh, what have I done? I've just seen to a team that's going to get smashed. But um, yeah, I remember he went there the first um, week was tough, you know, live, moving out of home. Um, it was sort of a bit lonely, lonely at home, a bit quieter, had a bit more food, so... Um, yeah, it was it was pretty tough. Um, yeah, his first game, um, we played at the same time, so I didn't get to see that. But um, yeah, he's loving it up, up there. Um, they're having a, a great year last year, having a great year this year. So um, yeah, he's loving it over there, and um, yeah, I could see him being there a long cool. time. Oh, yeah, yeah. I, the, the conversations I've had to him with him as well, actually, about uh, him settling in there. He loves the loves the area, loves the club, loves the staff, loves the yeah. boys. Um, it's just a great experience for him too because it reminds me of when I was his age, the 
the same age he went to the Knights, so I went to the Warriors, and that's yep. why I was kind of giving him some advice to say, mate, you just got to go, 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 like um, get out of your comfort zone, get away from, you know, uh, what feels normal and just focus on your footy. He's done that. Um, he's come back bigger than ever from his ACL injury. Um, yeah. You know, he, he's absolutely flying at the moment. Every time I talk to him, he's like, mate, I could just hit a pee. He said he ran yeah. a 432 <laughs> bloody 1.2 the other day. I don't know how that brain moves, that <laughs> nuggety little body moves. Yeah. But, yeah, every time I talk to him, he's putting on weight, he's lifting heavier, he's getting stronger. So it's um, great to see him. Training really well over there. Hundred percent. I love that. I love that. Um, all right. What has Blake Braley learnt in his NRL career so far from year one to year two? Now, I want anything from whether it's on the field, off the field, how to deal with adversity, how to deal with media, how to deal with teammates. Yeah. <laughs> what have you learnt what, from year one to year two? <sighs> Obviously, as you know, you've got to gain more experience. Um, probably. Um, with the recovery side, um, you know, week to week's pretty tough. Um, I was never really sort of someone that enjoyed getting into an ice bath <laughs> after games, but um, I kind of realised the benefits now of it. And, um, yeah, that's probably the one of the main things that you really um, need to be on top of your recovery after games because your body gets sore, your body's getting bashed around every week. It's just the tackles, man. I know. It's especially been... <laughs> 80 kilos <laughs> ringing wet. <laughs> 86 kilos. Uh, yeah, 86. <laughs> with six liters of water in my guts. Um, but also social media. It's yep. it's pretty tough. Um, mm. You know, coming through as a young sort of person, I would read every comment. I would, um, you know, sort of uh, bite back at some of the comments, not right back, just sort of feel a bit of a grudge towards it. Um, yep. I've sort of realized, I think you... You know, sort of came up to me after a game, said, mm. just turn your phone off, just don't even worry about it. Um, that's definitely something you had to pretty learn, learn pretty quickly. Yeah, that's huge, man. And I think especially these days, like the young kids, like when I started my career, like there was there was social media, but it was nothing compared mm. to what the level it is on today. Yep. And just the, the how easily access we are, you know, to obviously put ourselves out there 80 minutes every week, boom. We give it our absolute all, absolute best, and sometimes we're our best falls short. But then, sometimes you know the go- the boys come off and they're checking their phones and they're checking yeah. their DMs, and the people are just like saying ridiculous stuff. And yeah. you know, I'm a massive advocate for it because like I'm a big believer in using social media positively and having fun with it. But there's you know a fine line between being a dickhead and, and you yeah, know sure. um, not doing the right thing. So you know, I'm c- continue to try and tell our younger boys boys to do that. But that's definitely definitely a great point all right what's what's blake braley's biggest improvement from i guess his first year to, first two years now heading into his third year in first grade Oof. um that's a tough one uh by my communication i've been pretty quiet the last few years i want to sort of um get out of that i sort of want to talk a bit bit more um and i've always sort of been the quiet sort of person in the team so you know, I know I won't be no Toby Rudolph or no <laughs> Andrew Feeder, no Royce Hunt, but um, yeah, just to think maybe giving in little contributions into training and on and off the field where I can sort of talk a bit more. I definitely think you're ways ahead of where you started. Yeah. Now you're way better than where you used to. A few years ago, you wouldn't even peep. <laughs> you wouldn't even say peep. Oh no, I wouldn't. I wouldn't say anything, would I? Um, all right. Next question is: What does Blake Braley? enjoy away from football what do you do with your time off um outside of footy you just like to go to the beach like to surf anything outdoors like to do um like going on surf trips you know taking my swag um going camping with a few mates um you know having fires with the family barbecues um i'm not really much of an indoor sort of playstation sort of person um like to be outside um you know kicking the ball shooting a basketball um they're sort of the things I enjoy. And I've got a bit of a, I haven't really told many people, a bit of an artistic side. So I like to draw, I like to paint. Um, yeah, they're sort of the things. I like to do hands-on things, really. Yeah, beauty. I love that. What would Blake Braley be doing for a job if he wasn't playing rugby league? Um, yeah, I've thought about that recently, actually. Um, with studying coming up, uh, I sort of like the fact of being a teacher, maybe PE or primary school teacher. Um or, you know, maybe using my artistic um, sort of side 
Uh, I'm not too sure where, but maybe fitting in. To create something. something. Yeah, yeah, I thought maybe, um, yeah, I like creating things. My little brother's good with designing and, um, yeah, like I've spoken to you a few times, we got a few little things we can all, uh, me and my brothers can um, contribute in and put in together where we can design something pretty cool and... A few little things in the pipeline. Yeah, a few yeah, little we'll things in the pipeline. Leave, we'll leave it at that. Bit of admin <laughs> coming soon. <laughs> yeah, nice. Um, but yeah, they're just a few things I, I enjoy doing. Sweet, that's sick. All right, let's finish off with the last bit of today's uh, show and there's a few fan questions. So every week we chuck up the story and get you guys to send in a fan question on Instagram. The first question is from Madison underscore Petrovsky. What inspired you to play for the Sharks? Um, I think growing up in Cronulla, um, you know, I always wanted to play for the Sharks. Um, you know, watching Gal coming through, um, you know, when you when you're growing up in the Shire, your first words aren't Mum and Dad, it's 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 G Train. So, <laughs> um, and especially watching you, Chatty, being a local junior coming through, that really made the dream um, a, a re- realistic. So, um, yeah, I knew I've always wanted to be in Cronulla, and um, yeah, I've definitely got a goal of. Hopefully stay in there for my whole career. We've got a special bond us too, don't we? Yeah, we do. Local, Local genius. genius. We look after each other. Yeah, well, you have to. There's yeah. not many left of There's us. There's not many of us. No. Around there, is there? Uh, I'll rate that. <laughs> All right, next one is from Nate Rogers. Who is your favourite Sharks player? I don't know if this means now or maybe like yeah. when you are growing up. Maybe just go when you are growing up. Growing up um, would obviously be Gal coming through. Um, and obviously I liked watching uh, Michael Ennis being hooker there. I liked how... He um, brought a bit of fire in the middle, um, just a competitor and just his how smart he was playing. Um, yeah, I definitely watched a lot of video of him and definitely studied his game very thoroughly. Nice. Next one is from Maximus Good Twenty Three. What is your favourite moment at the Sharkies so far? Um, probably just my debut game, running on with my brother. Uh, that's probably something I'll I won't forget. We got a photo together where we both run the field together and. Um, Especially, um, I think a few games later, we versed the Cowboys at Townsville and I scored my first NRL try and the first one to pick me up and hug me was my brother. That's so, sick, I remember that. Yeah, we've got, we got a good photo at home that's all blown up on, on the wall. So, um, yeah, b- probably those two moments are something I, I won't forget. All right, next one is from Samara underscore Furnace. If you could pick a player to play alongside you from any like current or former player to play in your team with you, who would it be? Oh, that's a good question. Um, I always say for me, I always say like Darren Lockyer because I'm like, yeah. Lockyer plays six, I'll play seven. Like. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I know what you mean. Um, well, I'll pick someone in the spine. Uh, I'd love to play with Andrew Johns. Yeah, there you go. He's, um, he's smart and definitely probably Billy Slater. Him pushing through the middle, me running, I'd love to see what we could create and um, yeah, probably those two players are someone yeah, I'd love to lace up the boots with. Nice. All right. There was a, there was plenty of questions from the boys that wrote through actually. Yeah. One from I Toby know. Rudolph that I'm just going to leave. I'm not going to even yeah, mention nah, it. Not going to mention. But Teague, undersc- Teague underscore Wilton says, is it true you can't actually skate and use that skateboard purely as a prop? Teague Wilton. Teague is, Wilton. Is he in the 20s? Is he in <laughs> yeah, just the ball? young 20s? Uh, yeah. I, I, don't, <laughs> I think that name rings a bell. Um, <laughs> and Ryan Rivett says, why don't you do legs in the gym? I, <laughs> I'm like, Ryan, he, Ryan, that's a little bit rich from rich young from Ryan, me. is it? <laughs> Every time I'm doing my calf exercises, <laughs> yeah. he's always into me, oh. good on those baby cows. <laughs> but oh, it's not working. I'd, I don't know what to do with my legs. They just don't get bigger. I do gym five days a week and... I'm still built like a praying mantis. <laughs> I'll rate that. All right, next question is from Kuna1135. What's the best thing about playing for the Sharks? Oh, best thing about playing for the Sharks? Um, probably just playing with um, players you grew up watching. Um, that's a bit of a, still a surreal feeling. Um, you know, sort of pinch yourself that local junior, you come through the grades and you eventually make your NRL debut and, you know, you, you're passing the ball to Chad Townsend, Sean Johnson. Um, you know, you're getting coached by Paul Gallen, Luke Lewis. Um, it's a pretty surreal mm. feeling and um, yeah, definitely um, sit back and enjoy the moments that I'm at training and 
you really get to build those friendships and those bonds with those sorts of players. I think it's like a bit of I, I still pinch me moment now when and I'm sure you do as well. Like you would have been you would have gone and watched Sharks when you were a young fella. Yeah. And you would have sat on that hill and you would have watched the team play and be like, I want to play that one day. And now that we're training on that field every single day, like there's days where I'll just be like, I'll look over on the family hill and I'll just be like, Man, I used to like phew, 15 yeah. years ago, I used to sit on that hill with my flag. Yeah, I know. I remember. And it's like, don't take a moment for granted, eh? Yeah, those many, many nights you'd have a soft serve on the hill watching, you know, Gow take a thousand carries. <laughs> up. And then to be able to actually do it and be a part of it is, yeah, it's um, it's gone pretty quickly. But uh, yeah, like you said, you definitely don't take it for granted. All right, Blakey, last question is from Stephanie.Faulkner. What's it going to be like versing Jaden for the first time? Uh, it's going to be very interesting. Um, I don't really think it's me he's got to worry about. I think it's Woodsy. <laughs> I think yes. it's Ronaldo. It's all those players that are just going to sledge him. Um, <laughs> I won't. I'm sure we'll have a moment where we come face to face with each other. And yeah, you'll um, tackle one. You? Oh, um, yeah, you'll rip sure. his head tape off. Hopefully, oh, <laughs> I hope so. I hope there's something in the scrum or um, yeah, we, we have a moment together. But um, it'll be definitely. I'm exciting. Um, I don't I think my parents will enjoy it too much. My mum sort of closes her eyes when yeah. we play. So, um, yeah, it's definitely going to be exciting. Um, something different and a bit weird at first, but I think we're both looking forward to the challenge. Yeah, I look forward to it too. I'll be into him verbally. Who are you picking? On, just on the side. Oh, I'm picking you. I'm picking yeah. my teammate. Yeah. Oh, I understand. Yeah. On, the, on the field, I'm picking you. Off the field, I'm picking him. <laughs> I'm joking I'm joking you want to oh, Why? Can you explain that? <laughs> no I can't explain it well, I'll rate both of You know you're both my good mates So um, Blakey That's it for today brother Mate I really appreciate it We're back in the train Tomorrow morning um, Thursday's Speed and footy Friday's another big day uh, Yesterday was a big day Wasn't it? Yeah I, uh, I got out of the con So I was happy yeah, about that Looking after the ankle Yeah too skinny That's why <laughs> <laughs> Too fit already yeah. <laughs> But he's uh, yeah, thank you very much, Buzz. Thanks for having I me. I really appreciate it. And thank you very much, guys, for listening to today's episode with Blake Braley on the Chad Townsend Show. Make sure you check it out. Spotify, iTunes, and you can watch it on YouTube. We'll see you guys on the next episode. Yo!